Do you are you in Hungary right now, or you are in uh, in Norway with the band? I'm I'm already in the states. Uh, I came a little bit earlier to see my son. You know, he lives in LA. He just moved to LA mm -hmm. like five six months ago. Six months ago, they won funny. They won a green card and a lottery. So oh, he, cool. he moved out. Yeah, I mean, he's 27, 28. Of course, he should cry, you know. So mm -hmm. he's here now. He's doing fine. And I'm here to visit them with his wife here. And uh, I will take from here to Nashville. To Nashville, uh, yeah. That's what they're the so. uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. And, and are you are you guys um ready for nashville so how, how do you feel about these tours uh it's not uh the first time for you guys in america but how do you feel about this tour right now in 2023 i think uh it's gonna be very interesting with cannibal corpse um we never toured together but we had some shows together and we hang very well when we met you know those few times uh we have a great respect to each other i think the two bands so it's uh, i think we both benefit from this idea because we still have different audience both metal of course but somehow we don't we are not a copy of each other for sure <laughs> you know so no, it's, but, gonna but be... it's really it's really interesting because uh, as you said it's all metal i mean i would go i love death metal but at the same time i love black metal and it happens yeah. it happens with uh with all metal heads i mean more most of the metal heads are into black metal or death metal somehow you know yeah and now it's more converged you know used to be a, i remember in the early 90s it was a little bit more like a separation mm -hmm. maybe um but now i think whole meta like became like so many like styles and stuff and so basically people who are into extreme metal they i think they just you just appreciate even and it's a cool thing with this uh with this uh tour like if you maybe you are a, a cannibal corpse fan or something maybe you would not go to to see me and because you want to save for your shit you know maybe but uh in this way you can see and you would check but you know when you have to make a decision but in this you know and at night you have you can yeah, see us and vice, vice versa you know and maybe you know some people start to listen to us and also the same like our fans fuck well, anyway of course was what a great show you know let's check this shit out a bit more awesome. you know and stuff like that it happens to me sometimes too when i see an opening or a, a you know another band like i like to watch the band the openers a little bit you know because sometimes they're very interesting they might refer to the main band however now this is a co-headline tour so it's like i think we're gonna switch probably or we will see how it will go but uh, that's the plan at least we switch like who is playing last last each it's night gonna headline so. yeah yeah but that's fine you know i even don't mind to be first it, i think it's all like uh more like technical stuff you know for the stage but if it's possible we're gonna switch around you know but it doesn't really matter the most important we both uh, have something going on and uh, in this way we might gain a little bit bigger venues you know and uh, bigger stages maybe better you know sound better production let's hope more, more you know. people so everyone can see their band their favorite band in a better stage in a better room you know so i think it's gonna be uh, a great tour pretty intense like we go like one month or of course there are a few traveling days so-called day offs but it's not really a day off you know and mm -hmm. uh um yeah i just i think it's uh it's gonna be awesome i'm looking forward you know it's yeah, good to be back we also, especially we also, in the covid in the fucking covid we couldn't play now it's good to be back again you know to
San Antonio are gonna play in a theater, the Aztec Theater. Cool. But, uh, it's a bigger, it's a bigger uh, venue, so it's uh, I've never been there, but it's a theater. It's not like a club. Sounds cool. Yeah. Um, and, and in terms of um, in terms of uh, of the show that you're gonna uh, you're gonna perform on this tour, so because I, last time I saw you, it was in uh, in Vegas. You played in the Cycle Festival uh, in twenty. Uh in 2022 i guess um and you had the 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 way you have divided the the set it was like kind of three acts are, are you doing the same this time or are you yes, going to do a uh, different set we do uh, a similar set um it's still the diamond record basically we just use the opportunity to come back now so we don't start a new show in that mm -hmm. sense you know the plan to change the show is next year for the four years of mayhem that's going to be a different show i think but uh we started to like i'm not sure it's haven't been decided yet but uh, we all kind of like this these sets like these different sets of the different eras mm -hmm. in the it seems like it's working you know um so for for this tour for this tour we want, we're gonna keep it for sure but even for the future because personally i like it and people always com uh, saying compliments like it's cool it's like having you feel like have more yeah. than one show at one night you know because it starts again another like we had a block of the mysterious era we have a block of the new era and we have a block of the old era uh like the very beginning 80s era i think it's uh, it's a cool idea it's worked out i don't know we just no, came up with it. and, uh, and the show looks uh, i mean when uh when you go back and then you come back so it's uh, it's kind of chaotic in a way you know it, it looks yeah uh, yeah and this band is come on, like we're gonna be 40 years old i mean of course there are other old bands now <laughs> but uh it's it's i think it's a cool way to show you know the part of the history a little bit we're trying to do that mm -hmm. you know this yeah. this this time sections so yeah i'm it's gonna be like that and um i personally enjoy it i think it's cool it's cool like um, uh, uh, a new a new beginning in the in the night you know every every part you know it's a, it's a break it's a little yeah. break it's like a theater piece when yeah, you have yeah, a little like, break uh, it was really when i saw yeah. you in uh, in vegas uh, like a year ago it was really uh it was a cool performance so it was it was it was Thank you. cool. And Attila, if you had to uh, choose the the best six minutes in the uh, during the set, so what would they be? The best six minutes. Six minutes, six or eight minutes in in the show, like uh, your favorite part in the show. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, depends. I mean, I like the the first part. I think it's good because of, I I always feel good to play the new songs or the the later songs and i uh, think that's that's very interesting but depends what you want of course like the very end is cool of the show when we like you know go crazy on the death crash so and mm -hmm. i think it's like i think i don't see the set list now but probably carnage and pure fucking armageddon would cover that mm -hmm. six minutes or of course a mysterious i think uh we're gonna play the i think we're gonna play the mysterious song sorry i don't have the set list in front of me yeah. are you gonna um, play uh busy moon you gonna skip that one. yeah once we did though once at least we did once yeah, we had a show, 
we, wow. we, we, we bless him here. We did a show once. He didn't play one song from the Mysterious. Just, I mean, that was the, these crazy times. Not to, not to piss off the audience or the fans, but we just wanted to show us our freedom too, that we can do that if we want, <laughs> you know, because it's, I don't, it's not, I don't like this kind of must thing. However, this is like, now we are talking about art and how much people love our music. So that's a different kind of must, you know, it's not like a bad way of must, uh, you know, it's not a bad way of limiting our freedom, but it's still kind of limiting the artistic freedom when people, fuck, why I, I don't have to pay, I do what the fuck I want, <laughs> you know. So did once that, but uh, of course, no, but also in honor, it's so important that song, not just for me, but the whole scene, you know, it's kind of symbolized. Yeah, it's kind of an anthem. The new, yeah. the new way, it's an anthem for the second, so-called second wave of black metal, which started in the early 90s mm -hmm. and even grow much bigger than the first wave. Yes, sir. And it's kind of like an and like, yeah, and it represents that early 90s era when, when, okay, mayhem, Burzum, we bleed out. Uh, that was really crazy, um, but we had to fight this battle, you know, and then the other, it opened up for the other bands too, actually a lot of opportunities what happened. I'm not saying it's just mm -hmm. us, you know, but we were a big part of that opening. So that's why this song represents that, like, all these other bands could come to the surface too, you know, we're like lurking, you know, <laughs> in the back. So, and it, it's a song that many bands has like do a version or a cover version of it. So, yeah. even in Cuba, in Cuba, there's a there was a black metal band called Unlike Domain, and they yeah. used to do a, a cover version of of, uh, of that song. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's an anthem, and it's uh, yeah. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. And and um, let's go back in time uh, with Tormentor. Um, I want to uh, ask you something about Tormentor because um, sure. you were, I mean, the Tormentor days, I guess you were in Hungary during the dictatorship, I mean, the, during the totalitarian oh, yeah. regime, right? Yeah, brother, it, just like, it, almost like you guys, almost like you. Uh, but it's different. I haven't been. But how to the was old... it? Was it more flexible with uh, art and music? Those things? No, 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 no. That was kind of fucked up, man. It was like a little bit like in Cuba, I think. Maybe yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, it's hard to compare because I haven't been to Cuba in the old it, Castro. It's the, same, it's the same. It's the same thing that they did in in in, uh, in the Europe with uh socialist uh, countries. I mean, yeah. Um, it it's was the, same. the same. They it's apply the, the same, same in Cuba. Yeah, it's the same, like this kind of dictatorship, this kind of socialist, communist uh, uh, ideology, you know, yeah. and of course, everything was super limited um, um, in art and in many other things too, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a police state, like there was like, of course, like forces, like, you know, you and they were like you know the cat the, like you know the cops basically could just beat you up without no, no reason you if they reason. wanted yeah. Yeah. yeah you know it's like you it was there was no election ever uh there was nothing like that you know it was like always the same people the same leader talking about this blurry ideology mm -hmm. uh like w what to achieve and it the part the communist or the communist or socialist party was involved in everything so even in my school there was a part department like the political the ideology the political yeah, ideology yeah. they had to be present everywhere you know and the picture of these leaders and actually in hungary there is a Museum called Terror Museum, Museum of Terror, because hung, we, we felt like total freedom to get that, from that shit. And it's it's this interesting stuff, like 
we had the Nazis, you know, in the Second War in, mm -hmm. in Hungary, and they made this police building, the secret police building. And when they gone, the communists came, and they just took over the building. They took it on they were the same thing. <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. They just keep 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 going, keep working on that. You know, they just took over mm -hmm. the stuff, and in that actually, in that very building, um, the original building is the museum today. And it shows, like, when it's all about that, like, half of it shows the extreme Nazi shit and the other, the extreme communist shit. The other stream, the, both are streams. <laughs> and exactly, and you can see, it's strange, because you can see the parallelities, how parallel they were, how, how many similar stuff, of course, from a co different approach, but it's like the police, the four, like mm -hmm. they use the same shit, you know? The same, and the same repression, the same... Um, Oppressed, um, uh, no freedom you know you can say anything you can say what you want you can't music after the berlin wall collapsed like you remember that it was it was a relief it was like um uh, you could do more in terms of freedom uh, mm. um you could go and play in other countries like like better or faster or after the berlin wall collapsed yeah after the berlin wall collapsed everything changed you know and then um like we hungarians we were a little bit less fucked than the others in the old system but the others just exploded, like Poland, Czech, Slovakia, you know, they everybody wanted to travel to the West finally, you know, see what it is. Um, it was just like a, a, a miracle. And the first years were super, super beautiful because everybody looked so positive for the future and everything. And then when the darker shit came, like economy problems, you know, and all the stuff and people realized that their countries was like sold for pennies <laughs> suddenly on there there was a lot of corruption you know because this old old imagine there is an old political system collapse and there is a new one nobody knows how it works they didn't know how to work it out yeah and in between that gap people cashed in you know <laughs> so let's go back to uh that first moment and when they recruit you for mayhem, so can can you take us to that uh, to that time? It was a call, it was a conversation that you have, so you can join for you to join mayhem. Um, it was like I had my band tour mentor, which was yeah. pretty big in Hungary. Our, our uh, record wouldn't be couldn't be released, so but it ended up like the tapes ended up to Norway, and uh, I, I even didn't know. That these tapes went to abroad actually um i already stopped with tormentor and i was actually working on my new band called plasma pool which was more like dark industrial electro that time it seemed for me like such a big challenge and beautiful challenge it was no computer so how to make uh, music dark, without computer uh, music without computer yeah and I wish that time I could use a computer, but it didn't exist. And that like was like, you know, keyboards and how to make with electronic music evil shit. That was my interest, you know, because there were bands like Tepes Mode maybe, but they were like, okay, a little bit dark, but nothing too. So it was, it was like a challenge and we were playing with that idea. I was inspired by like Skinny Puppy and Frontline Assembly, like all the 80s pretty pretty cool shit then i heard from mayhems our, our old guy who worked for tormentor he had an address so the, he approached me and he said like hey this band called mayhem uh would like to contact you about tormentor and singing 
And I was like, that was like maybe 92. 92? 92, yeah, 91 maybe. Um, but it was just after that committed suicide, actually. I don't know. I was it 91, yeah? I it was, so. uh, you entered the oh. same year, the, the same year, the, you started recording Mystery or, or a year before? No, no, no. No, no, I, I heard from them like two years before that mm -hmm. or something because uh, Euronymous just wrote me and he talked about the band and like what happened and that also he was super interested to release Tormentor, you know, on his label. That was one of the main topics and the other topic was that uh, if I could sing and replacing that, you know. It was strange because my name, you know, when I heard from Mayhem, I was like kind of surprised. Like, what, if, what, what is this? Because, for instance, my name was Mayhem in Tormentor, my artistic name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was like such a strange. I thought first it was like a big Do you think it was a coincidence or are they were looking for you because of the job you did in Tormentor? Uh, they looked for the for look for me definitely because uh, they love my vocals apparently and uh, that i was one of the favorite vocalists of that who, who who died so euronymous wanted to find me also he loved torment or and my vocals too obviously mm. so that's what he uh, it was a very gentle very nice letter actually he sent me and but then we were talking for like two more years there was, I didn't know. I told him I was at the university that time. I was like, yeah, I could do it, but whatever. There was like letters back and forth. He was like, okay, soon I will send you the new material. That just I heard before that he sent me the Death Crush record and a bunch of some other records like Dark Throne and stuff. But from me, I'm only the Death Crush, you know. And uh, also, there was a CD called Projection of a Stained Mind, which was like a, a, a compilation CD from Nordic metal bands. And there was a Mayhem song that, with Dead, actually two, I think, Freezing Moon and maybe Funeral Fog. And um, actually, the Dead Crush didn't impress me that much. It was cool. But I was there with Tormentor. I was like, it's a, it's okay, we can do it. But felt like a bit punky, you know. I felt like I was there with Tormentor already. But when they sent me the new stuff, the mysterious demos, you know, and pre-recordings, or they had this demo recording, that was something else. You liked it? I liked it a lot, actually. Then I was like, holy shit, this is some like it sounded like a different band. <laughs> Let's do something. Let's do something. It, it's not like a game, but uh, um, I try to do this. Uh, I'm trying to do it. It's kind of new, even for me. Uh, I'm gonna say like a half of a statement. It's kind of a half of a sentence, and you tell me what comes to your mind. Okay. So whatever it comes to your mind, it could be are you following that idea or you you uh, having a different idea on, on that. Okay. So it's something okay. that I'm gonna I'm gonna try. So right. uh, let me start with the first one. You can continue, you can agree, disagree, whatever comes to your mind, okay? So, uh, Satan is the answer to mankind. Yeah, it's the answer for your fears, for your negative side, for the darkness. Something is like you have to embrace and understand uh, to make complete your life. Okay. 
approved. Let, let, this is the second one. Make metal music, not war. Yeah, and keep it a spiritual war. And ch keep challenging because music is a language and uh, expression. And instead of going to wars, let's play, you know, aggressive music and communicate like that. Um, anyway, I'm definitely against wars, man. Like, and, and I love to sing about war, but that's a spiritual war and that's like an artistic way. And, but I hate to see people when they being just manipulated. It's so stupid to see, you know, uh, by other asshole, fucking war pigs like Sabat says or this polit politician whoever fuck you know and yeah make them to destroy each other each other life each other countries fucking bullshit okay right, and the last one the last one uh seven churches i won't burn <laughs> proposed <laughs> I love that record, man. That it. was so fucking cool. Yeah. And um, and what else? What else do you have? Uh, the band after this tour that you can uh, disclose. What else uh, the band has maybe for next year? Uh, yeah. Have... This tour is gonna take uh, all October, I guess. Uh, yeah. Most of October. Then I think I don't know if we have more shows this year, but we're gonna. I mean, we are working on a new record. We started to work on a new album. And uh, the next year is gonna be our anniversary year. So we will have a few of those like four years. Mayhem, of course we have to. <laughs> like uh, you're gonna do like massive tours next year because of the 40 anniversary, you know? Don't think we're gonna make like big tours, more like, uh, Single shows. Hope to come to US back with that. What about so, coming to US for the 40th anniversary? I mean, that will be good. We should. We should. I think we should at least some festival. I don't know. I I can't mm -hmm. tell you now, but uh, I think. I mean, definitely, it's a different. It's gonna be a different show, different set. You know, so, so we should play that in US. So I think we will see. And can you can you be a spoiler and, and disclose something about the the new record? How, how are you feeling? Have you heard? Have you rehearsed some sounds or? Very early stage. Um, I just started to work right now. I'm working on some ideas with Charles, you know. Um, but it's still I'm just really mapping up his ideas, and you know, mm -hmm. just really started to share. I just made some really really early sketches on some songs you know and uh i Can think we spread it's like gonna a... be, i mean it's very hard to explain i i didn't hear i heard just a few reads from morten so it's really really early to stay but i think we, we aim to continue from demon but i guess it's gonna be maybe a little bit more contemporary less old school maybe we mix try to mix the new start you know <laughs> like demon was like old school in a way in a in a in today's uh, manifestation or something and then i think those songs have a bit of bit more complex bit more aggressive maybe this new one but also it had some nice kind of atmospheric parts some songs so i think it's gonna be like diamond maybe that should be interesting to listen to mm. yeah yeah it's gonna be a, a little bit more complex i think as i hear now but mm -hmm. but it's not the point to get more complex we just want to do more i would like to do more a straightforward more yeah, more straightforward, a bit more aggressive, a bit more punchy, maybe. We will see. I don't know. Okay. And thank you so much for your time. And um, I don't want to keep you uh, any longer. Uh, just uh, I want you to like give me like, your last statement for the Texans fans, I mean, of Mayhem. So what would you tell them? Um, because the, the the start date is in less than two weeks. I mean, the, for the for the tour, the kickoff, it's uh it's in less than two weeks. I think yeah. uh, in Nashville, right? 
yeah, in Nashville. We start in Nashville, and I, I don't see the routing now. Yeah, I don't know. We we're gonna do both side, east and west coast, and in between something. So it's gonna be, yeah, massive, pretty normal, massive. not extremely long, but in one month tour, you know. I think um, it's, it's yeah. over a month. Yeah, it's uh, it's around a month. Yeah, for the fans, like I'm fucking happy to be here. Uh, we are getting like an aged vine, so don't miss it. Who knows how long we can be here? You know, you never know. I mean, we all gonna die, and that's a good news, mm -hmm. and it's a bad news too. But uh, uh, let's celebrate this together. Let's celebrate our time. Come to uh, come and be part of our ritual. And it's going to be still about those mysterious parts of life. And Nahum is still about uh, the dark side of the spiritual world. And like I yeah, earlier mentioned, we have to learn. It's not have to, but we should learn how to embrace this thing, this this fears, this dark energies, how to release it. You know, the whole music is about it and having some fucking fun, of course. And have a great night. Um, looking forward and see you from the stage. And thanks for your support. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.